Here we are, Alaska Savage. Um, hope you guys are liking what you're seeing. Here you can see we put the, we got them all out of the game bags. And these are the game bags that I'm talking about. They're all canvas, got heavy cotton. And they rewash it. You can rewash them, reuse them. Um, they rip or tear, they're pretty tough. You can sew them up with dental floss, throw a little bit of shoe goo on them. They're pretty inexpensive where you can buy new ones. But uh, you got our quarters hay in here, throw a fan on them, keep them dry. They got a lot of blood on them. You can take some uh, about one third vinegar, two thirds water. Wipe them all down nice and good. Try to get the hair off of them off here again. We're probably gonna do them one more time with some more vinegar water. Uh, helps bring down the pH level on them also. So then we'll start getting foul. We've already started butchering up a bunch here and uh, got some more game bags to go through. We're gonna do up the ribs and grinding burger. Um, we got a lot of grinders out there, but this one, this is the carnivore from Cabela's. This thing uh, mows through the meat in a hurry, and we'll show you here in a little bit. But uh, it really, it really zaps through it, makes a big job pretty small. I'm gonna run a dog through here pretty soon too. They don't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> at the end, at the end, I'll run a couple slices of bread through this, and it'll push out everything that's in the auger out. And then when you get to the bread, then just pull the bread out of the meat, you know, off of it. Don't mix it in with the meat. But it goes through it really good, um, nice and clean, lean, really good for you. Um, I'm cutting up backstrap. When you cut up backstrap, I got this one all trimmed up a little bit. When you cut a back strap, the muscle tissue runs this way. It's kind of like a grain of a tree. Um, you want to cut cross, cross, cross grain. And what I'm doing is I segment it into pieces. Um, I think the more, if you, a lot of people cut it into steaks. My preference is that if you cut it into steaks, then you allow taining of the meat. And every time you cut into it, just like any other fish or, or any kind of wild game you do, the more you cut into it, the more you expose it to different stuff. So what I do is I've been cutting this up. There we go. What I've been doing is I've been cutting it up into portion sizes and then we're going to wrap it. And all I do is cut it into portion sizes. I'll label it as back strap and go from there. We're doing this out in my brother's yard. So it's wife is nice and happy and we don't make a mess in this house so we're kind of out here in the neighborhood here's the tongue that i'm going to wrap i've still got to cut up the heart we'll go into that here in a little bit but i just wanted to show you that back strap here's the flank meat i'm going to make some jerky out of that later we might also cut it up and jar it um that's it i'll show you a little more and we'll finish up guys here's all i have to care of the heart like I would a steak almost. Go on, go. And uh, so I've already cleaned up this one side and I'm just gonna kind of block it off here. And then I'm gonna roll it over and we're just gonna finish trimming it up. Don't say you wouldn't like it until you've tried it. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So it's the part that I'll, I'll spend the extra effort to pack out of the woods and I'm gonna pack it out and gotta see something for a chunk of meat. So there it is right there. Once you get it like that, when you get it cleaned up, just start cutting it into steaks. This doesn't, this is one of my meals that doesn't last very long. So I don't throw this whole thing in on portions like I would the other steaks. I want to be able to rinse this out. I'm going to soak it in some salt water, um, try to get some more of this blood out. But 
then I'll wrap it in portion size. But I'm cutting about one inch, one inch thick, three quarters inch. And uh, you can cut it a little thinner. Some people like it thinner, some people like it thicker. Um, I cut it in about I don't know, three quarters to one inch. As you can see, it kind of holds a little blood, but it's nice, clean, lean meat. It's got a different taste to it than the rest of the moose. It's pretty sweet and uh, has a little different texture, a little more chewy, but it makes um, phenomenal meals, man. I barbecue it on the grill. I mean, I even tried smoking some of it and it comes out great, but there you are right there. There's the heart all done up. I'll rinse that out with salt water, let it soak for a little bit, kind of dry it off and uh, wrap it up. We'll probably have some tonight for dinner. That's it. Here we are with another front shoulder. Uh, I don't have enough time for video because I'm not that fast at it and I don't claim to be the best at it. But what you want to do is you want to knock off all this fat, trim it off everything, and then open it up in the segment. So you'll see where the fat is, and you'll open it up in segments. And you're gonna find that you're gonna find muscles that are all, and you're gonna segment all the muscles. If you segment all the muscles, you're gonna do fine, okay? Just like that. So you're just gonna break them apart, start tearing into this. This is the outside of the front shoulder and you're just going to start bringing everything around okay and all you're going to do is try to segment every muscle take care of any kind of bloodshot like there's bloodshot here cut that out cut out the fat if you like keeping the fat and you like the gaminess then uh that's your prerogative and you can hang on to it um i'm not a big game gamey meat eater so uh just uh clean it up keep it dry and uh we'll show you a little bit about how we wrap it Here's the finished product of the front shoulder, okay? Try not to leave a lot of meat on there. I know I could have probably done a little better, but um, that's pretty much it. That's the whole front shoulder. This is the meat over here. We're saving the bones for uh, bone stock. Uh, it makes really good bone stock. We'll chop it into smaller pieces, put it in the freezer. But between what we've already ground in the burger, and what we got here, we just segmented all the muscles and some will turn into steaks, some will turn into jerky, uh, jarred um, meats. We're gonna do some jarred uh, meat and then uh, a bunch of burger. But uh, so I'm gonna show you how to wrap, wrap here. Don't be intimidated though. I mean, you get this big old leg and uh, you get all, I mean, you're looking at it just start in it, clean it up, get the fat off the edge, start seeing where the segments start, and then just start segment the muscles down. Um, anybody can do this. I mean, there, I don't think there's any right way or wrong way. You segment the muscles, you clean it up, and then just take care of it accordingly. But I like to wrap it in butcher paper and double cellophane. So I take this cellophane wrap, I figure out what my portion size is gonna be. Put it in your cellophane. Roll the corners. Try to roll the air out of it. Air is not your friend. Roll the corners again. Bring it out. Double wrap this meat in the cellophane, okay? We're gonna do several of them. Worth and a little more respect for the animal that you take care of. So 
This is the first stage of it. We'll show you some wrapping on the paper here as soon as I get all this done and we'll go to the next stage. You got to look at my phone now and then. So you're talking to this phone all more right. than anybody else. All right, here we go. So just wrap it in the corner, hit it with the butch paper, wrap it in the corner, tuck the ends, done. That's one. Take the corner, cellophane up. This is tongue, I gotta make sure I don't mark this differently. Hey guys, don't be intimidated. Um, your meat is uh, what you're out here for, so you don't have to take it to a butcher shop. Um, you can do it yourself. It's super easy buy the materials get set up um the more you do the faster you'll get the more efficient you'll get and uh you'll have a lot of pride in the meat you eat all right guys everybody thinks this is this is uh one of the testicles that i've done this is one that's not done so what i do i just start skinning it a little bit get it out of its sack get it like this we'll cut it in kind of bite-sized pieces and I'll season up some flour and some hot grease and I'll run this in some seasoned flour and brown them up and they look really soft like a wet marshmallow but uh, they actually firm up really good when you cook them and uh, they've got actually a clammy between a clam and an oyster taste and uh, Matt's gonna try one here for the first time tonight, so he's all excited. He's got a big old smile on his face, or maybe that's a gag. But uh, they look good. I gotta lie, it looks pretty uh, good. I mean, it it is definitely if you didn't know what it was, and then someone fed it to you, you'd be dang, that is phenomenal. But then when you think of where it came from, what it does, and everything else, then it's kind of a kind of a turn off for some people. But heck, I'll try anything once. I've tried these, they're phenomenal, so I'm gonna keep eating them. So. Here we go, it's uh, wagging them and stacking them. Know where your meat came from. Moose nuts. Moose nuts. All right, so here we are, we're taking care of the ribs. We've already got one busted down. We're gonna take the diaphragm off that we left on. That's gonna get ground in the burger. Wanna make jerky out of it. Whatever you'd like to do, can it, jar it. Right there. This was the, around the stomach. So we're gonna separate it from the ribs. get trimmed up. And we'll clean this all up and segment it. And then these are the ribs. And this part here doesn't have much meat up here on the I've already taken it off. If I take a little bit of what we've got here, it's gonna get ground. And instead of wasting this bit of meat, I bust it loose. Skin it back, and when I cut my ribs with the sawzall, it'll be with the rib meat. pointed out today I was wrong. I was using a multi-cutting blade. The metal blade works way better, right Matt? Yeah. Metal blade? Yeah, metal blade. You don't get as many bone chips in there, he was pointing out, and he was correct. Sure <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna save this 
save this for bone stock, um, dog, dog treats, you can do all kinds of I'm just trying to get off a lot of pieces that don't have a lot of meat with them. And then this meat that we just flaked back now will be on our first set of ribs. <clears throat> try to get them keep them tight as possible not let as much air this is something you're going to want to eat first off okay because of the bone and a lot of the fat if you leave this till next year um it'll start getting a gamey taste but if you eat it within any of the necros these are our necros that we cut up off of it lots of meat in there still um it's a shame to kind of throw it away so you i mean it makes really good stews goes in instapot tons of recipes you can do with it but Anything with a bone in it, it'll start getting that gamey taste if you leave it in there. So this is kind of the stuff you want to eat with friends and family right out of the gate. I mean, the first three to five months and then uh, try to mow it down, try to get it all laid up first. But uh, that's ribs. For the brown sugar, um, you're going to use garlic and salt to make the jerky. So this is the recipe. So. Just make a nice layer in there so they're not overlapped. Get it kind of full. They're not scrunched together. And uh, you always start out with the salt because that's kind of the more dominant ingredient. And if you get it too salty it, or not enough salt. So a little more than what you do on table fare. Like if you were going to cook it for dinner, but not a lot. Okay, next ingredients, garlic. If you like black pepper or uh, red pepper flakes, I recommend you put it on when you're putting it in the smoker because it'll float around and pile up and you'll get a lot more um, in spots and thinner in others and it's not very consistent. So, Just to kind of a healthy layer of the brown sugar, not anything crazy. And then you just repeat the process. You got your pre-cut meat. basically the same recipe I use for um, my smoked fish also and it comes out good <coughs> you do it thin on your fish or you just what's that you do your fish kind of thin or do you no nope. just I like just fillets basically chunk it in chunks and then but I hit it with a little more salt just so it penetrates in there and cut smaller sections of the fillets into chunks. All right, so here we go again. Same thing. Salt always first, because you can see it. If you put the brown sugar on and the garlic, then you really can't see how much salt you're putting on. And so it's really hard to judge. 
and the garlic. Brown sugar. Just keep repeating the process over and over and over again to dry brine. When you get it, you know, when you get done, your top layer, um, by tomorrow, this will be like a soupy liquid. It'll be sitting in. But I usually brine it for at least a day minimum. Um, two days is sometimes better. And then set it on your smoker rack. Let it dry a little bit. Fire up your smoker with some alder or hickory or oak, some, some hardwood. Um, I prefer to peel it so it doesn't get bitter. Um, when it's got the bark on it, it just kind of gets a little bitter tasting heavy too heavily smoked but uh, I do them in big pieces and once I get done smoking it I just take a pair of industrial scissors and just chop it into small bite sized pieces and uh, vacuum seal it but uh, if you guys like what you're seeing um, please hit the like button share it with friends subscribe to it and uh, I'll keep putting these out if you guys keep liking them so um, let me know what you guys like and uh, or message me and if you've got any ideas on something or any comments um, glad to hear them um, you guys uh, whack them and stack them and uh, know where your meat comes from